So in this video, we're going to talk about the process of denoising photos. So denoising uh, or removing noise uh, from images is important for many applications, of course, uh, from making personal photos looking better uh, to uh, improving the quality of satellite and um, increasingly uh, drone images. Uh, and also for uh, certain other uh, denoising applications, for example, in astrophotography or in new types of photography, such as uh, multispectral uh, photography, particularly in the infrared. Uh, and these, of course, have many different and diverse applications. And uh, in image processing, uh, denoising is uh, functionally uh, looks like uh, we are smoothing out an image. Uh, but what is it that we are smoothing out uh, in order to remove the noise? And it turns out that under in certain interpretations of denoising, uh, we can uh, make a connection between denoising and what's called uh, total variation or the variation of the um, the image gradient uh, across uh, the image domain. So. Uh, one common way to denoise uh, an image is using uh, the so-called uh, OROF uh, algorithm, which stands for Rudin, Osher, and Fatimi. So this acronym OROF is an algorithm which was developed by uh, these three people, and uh, it basically works by a type of total variation reduction. Now, uh, total variation, I mentioned that briefly, is essentially, if we want to uh, write uh, in terms of mathematics, it's essentially the uh, the uh, integral of the gradient, image gradient across an image. So if we have an image, let me just use blue for the blue rectangle for our image. If we have an image which has a domain, an image domain, and we have a certain, if we like, gradient across the image, an image gradient, that uh, varies over the course of, let's say, uh, the image domain in terms of the grayscale of the pixels. Uh, that will be our image gradient. And if we want to write it as a type of mathematical equation, then the integral of the image gradient, the integral or the, or the sum, if you like, but we'll say integral, integral of, say, like, if we have 0 to 1 of 0 to 1, the integral of 0 to 1 will be equal to the total variation, so, or TV. So the integral of the gradient across the image domain is equal to the total variation. Okay, so this image gradient is actually what's related to the noise. It turns out that this is re related to the noise or can be made relate related to the noise, that the gradient across the image can be reduced and will reduce the noise. So in effect, a lot of the algorithms which work with uh, the function of denoising in mind is an effort to reduce the total variation in the image domain. So just what is the OROF algorithm for that we have to do a little bit of literature review and we can go back to the origin of the model by looking at the paper which was first published in 1992 uh, by uh, Rudin, Osher, and Fatimi themselves. So um, the uh, underlying mathematics of the OROF model uh, is very interesting, but uh, is actually quite complicated and involves um, a lot of uh, discussion, which uh, we won't go into in this video. Uh, the OROF model uh, has a very interesting property of uh, finding a smoother version of the image while preserving the edges and the structures. So, in other words, it can reduce the total variation of the image while preserving edges and structures, which is what we want. Uh, 
in any event, whenever we reduce the total variation, we do remove some of the texture of the image. Uh, but as we'll find out, we don't have to find the best possible, uh, the, 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 we don't have to, have to remove all of the variation, we can just find the best possible solution. So the uh, paper, which was done by OROF themselves, uh, essentially uh, looks at the pixel and sub-pixel range uh, to find a way to reduce the total variation. And it's interesting to note that uh, the authors actually base this work on um, the work of uh, Gaiman and Reynolds, uh, in which they propose uh, nonlinear functionals uh, to basically uh, minimize the nonlinear functionals associated with uh, noise uh, by use of uh, so called simulated annealing. And simulated annealing is very interesting because it has. Uh, the property which we'll come into, uh, we'll come to encounter again, uh, in which we um, are essentially finding a local minima of the TV functional, uh, so the total vari variance uh, functional. So it's really not the origin of this, uh, is not from OROF. Actually, Gaiman and Reynolds were first uh, talking about. Uh, essentially finding the minima, the global minimum, in their case, of functionals that were associated with the total variation. But the real uh, limitation of this was was Gaiman and Reynolds in their paper, uh, which is in which is referenced by OROF themselves, reference 10 here. So D. Gaiman and G. Reynolds, uh, constrained restoration and recovery of discontinuities in uh, 1990, they were talking already about using simulated annealing to do this uh, work, uh, finding a, a global minimum. But the key difference is that uh, OROF wanted to find a good local minimum instead. And it turns out that uh, the computers of the late 1980s, early 1990s, were uh, very slow at doing simulated annealing, uh, which is a metaheuristic technique. So uh, it's actually better to develop um, a, a good solver, a good um, TV uh, minimizing um, solver that uh, just finds a, a good uh, local minima or the best possible local minima. So uh, in order to implement this uh, technique that uh, OROF developed, uh, we can go through the mathematics, but the actual algorithm itself that I will use uh, in my denoising was actually developed much later by um, uh, Chambol uh, uh, by the Ecole Polytechnic uh, Centre de Mathematics Appliques. Uh, so this is uh, total variation minimization by um, ORF or or. M or F, sorry, uh, models by A. Chambol of June 2005. So this is a thesis and the page, I believe page 11, or sorry, equation 11 in this paper. Uh, let me just look through it here. Yeah, so this equation here is actually the algorithm uh, that we use to solver that I will use in uh, in Python is based on this uh, algorithm. Now, what does this algorithm actually do? So it's a modified version of the OROF algorithm that uses gradient uh, descent uh, reprojection uh, to achieve a total variance, remember TV minimization or slash regularization. And uh, the integral, as we remind, remind uh, so I'll remind you, the integral of the gradient across an image, any image, will produce uh, a total variance. Uh, and uh, now for noisy image images, as we said, the total variance will be higher. And knowing this, uh, the denoising techniques uh, essentially minimize the total variance. So the total variance has some function associated with it, some f of x uh, function. And this f of x, we want to minimize. And how do we minimize this? We minimize it by first using a partial differential equation, something like 
the uh, dx of f of x, which will which will uh, be our the uh, gradient essentially, which will form our gradient of this functional. And by finding the minima, not necessarily the global minima, but even a good local minima, will actually give a way a value and a uh, value that we can use to minimize the total variance. So the denoising techniques have been developed to uh, essentially do this. So what do we have of our image? So our image, just to get back to what our blue box is, our image is a, some image domain. So it has a matrix element. Let me use a box instead. So it has some matrix element. So there's different uh, values inside the matrix that contain uh, grayscale values. That contain grayscale values that are able to be represented in a matrix in the image domain. And these are obviously filled with numbers that are associated with the values of the grayscale uh, image. So we can take our value and represented like a matrix. And if we do this, then we can uh, essentially uh, reproject the uh, denoised image onto the original and by uh, some taking some um, uh, imaginary form of the original image uh, of the matrix element, which contains the residual texture of the image, we can effectively do uh, minimization or regularization. So to minimize the total variance, uh, different algorithms can be used. Uh, and the algorithm that's used by Chambol is a type of gradient descent, which is very similar to simulated annealing. If you remember uh, in the original paper, uh, it gave reference to these two authors, Gaiman and Reynolds here, and they proposed using simulated annealing to find the global minimum. And global minimum is not necessary because we can find a good approximation in a local minimum. But the process of simulated annealing is very similar to gradient descent. They're both metaheuristic algorithms. They both have some law, uh, some physical uh, parameter, which they're working on with a probabilistic, uh, varying probabilistic term. So it turns out that the gradient descent of the image matrix, which we mentioned here, the image matrix here, which has all these values, say like one, one and two and, and so forth, that it would have all different values based on grayscale values uh, and so forth, uh, based on the gradient of the image, uh, we can find the total variance. But what we have in these grayscale images in the gradient descent model is in fact, they represent uh, essentially energy uh, values. So the matrix actually becomes an energy surface in gradient uh, descent. It's represented as, a, as an energy surface, whereby uh, we want to descend into the global minima of energy values, in other words, of pixel uh, values uh, in this surface. So uh, we do this by um, representing the different values in the matrix, uh, representing uh, something like interaction energies of nearest the nearest neighbors uh, in a 2D energy surface, which is represented by uh, an equation uh, such as, um, let me see here, yeah, such as this. So the interaction energies, uh, J uh, as a function of W, uh, can be written as the equation of this, where we have a sum of interaction energies, uh, in particular uh, in a 2D uh, lattice. So the 2D nearest neighbors interaction energies are represented by this formula. So this is essentially the functional that we want to find the global minima. And we do this by getting the gradient of the image, essentially doing partial differential uh, equations on the Euclidean form of this uh, functional. So the uh, interaction energies will then converge and uh, to a global minima based on a certain step length of that value. And Chambol uh, came up with a very value of the step length uh, 
the experiments that he that were done showed that it converges uh, as uh, this value tau, this uh, step length value tau converges uh, um, less than or equal to one quarter or uh, uh, yes, so one quarter. So better, and they tried def different convergences, convergence values uh, to achieve this. This was experimental, so um, this can be done as an algorithm in Python. And the algorithm that we have here, the OROF algorithm, whoops, is on GitHub. So I have in the notes, I go over some of the theory, provide the links of the paper in this uh, description. And we have here the actual guts of the code. So the code here has uh, the image uh, being represented by a matrix. So we have a matrix of the of the image then in the form of M and N. So it's a uh, M is the columns and N is the rows. And this is our image. Then we have U and U is equal to U initial. So that's our initial image uh, matrix. And we have different components of the uh, image in the X and Y axis. And we find basically by finding the gradient of the of the primal uh, variables, the primal um, uh, grayscale values in the um, uh, matrix, we are then able to uh, find a gradient of this and update uh, the variable based on a certain value of the step length. And this function, then uh, the x and y values of this function uh, are then rolled uh, using this function roll cyclically around an axis and this is a, a very convenient way for uh, computing basically neighbor differences uh, remember we represented the values of the matrix as basically energy values where we want to find the nearest um, uh, neighbor energy values and uh, we then are able to find the values which we want to have as the minima values the local minima values and we do this by finding the derivatives and then uh, finding the uh, by finding the derivatives we're able to calculate using the um, gradient descent the local uh, minima so we roll uh, the primal variable around the x translation of the x component the y translation of the y component and eventually by uh, using this value of the weights uh, updating it of uh, the weight variables uh, with the image, we're able to find this value then, we're able to generate our denoised uh, matrix, image matrix U. And we can find the texture, the residual textures by reprojection, a reprojection method by having the imaginary form of the, the image uh, and uh, minus the, um, the uh, updated uh, denoised version of the image that gives us then our texture residual. And we're able to return U and T in this form as the denoised image and the texture residual. So we can use this uh, this uh, function uh, in Python uh, called uh, OROF uh, with different values of tau. Remember that's the step length uh, to find the uh, the that rate of convergence of this value. So that being said, we can use this in different applications. So that's the theory out of the way so that's the theory behind this uh, um, OROF algorithm and the papers that are of importance for to understand this are the uh, original uh, the the standard paper um, the 1992 paper by OROF themselves the Gaiman and uh, Reynolds uh, paper that they base their work on and also the more recent uh, Chambol uh, paper uh, base basically which gives the um, the modern in, in, in implementation of this algorithm so uh, primarily equation 11 here uh, is the implementation uh, that is used here in Python so Python is a very good tool for image processing it's kind of the gold standard and it's what I primarily use for my um, drone imaging uh, research so 
this code is in GitHub and it's used in tandem with not only the drone imaging, uh, but I'm trying to use it more and more with my astrophotography imaging as well, taken with the drones. But let's try it with uh, the NDVI, the standard NDVI near infrared uh, indexing uh, that I've been doing extensively over the past few years using my drone. So when I was in Gran Canaria, I took some photos. Let me just see if I can get them up here. Uh, yeah. So I took some photos of different landscapes. This is basically a Finca uh, that I took with um, a friend uh, uh, that I went on hikes with uh, that was organizing um, the development of abandoned, basically semi-abandoned farmland and restoring it using um, uh, techniques of water and land use management. So for this project, it was mapping a small section of land and you can see a lot of details here. Uh, and you might uh, think that um, uh, a photo like this would have a lot of details and it would also have a lot of noise. And you'd be correct in thinking that you would have a lot of reflections, a lot of uh, unfocused uh, regions uh, again anything that's flying uh, up at this height, a height of 60 meters or more, would have uh, wind, would have buffering, uh, uh, but be buffeted by wind, and um, would of course have uh, focus issues on certain images, so you'd want to denoise them, especially when you want to look at particular features. So this is obviously something that we would have to do, and the ROF algorithm luckily works with grayscale images, so by taking uh, photographs uh, convert, uh, and uh, doing NDVI, Normalized Differential Vegetation Index, we want to essentially convert to grayscale anyway, uh, converting the pixel values into Normalized Differential uh, Vegetation Index values. And then taking these values, we can use that as our matrix, use that as our value of U, and by using the nearest neighbors uh, reduction, uh, total variance reduction, uh, by finding the derivative across this uh, matrix, we are then able to uh, find a, a good local minima in order to eliminate noise. So let's do that on our images using this code. So this is essentially the same code that I've showcased here before, but this time it has the denoising uh, features. So by importing ROF and having ROF in the directory, of course, in the denoised uh, region, we have NDVI denoised batch, that's the main file, and this is the function uh, which calls on the ROF algorithm. So we can run that and by converting our images to grayscale, performing the NDVI on them, on the image matrix, and then performing denoising on the NDVI matrix itself, we can have our images being denoised. So this runs in the directory of the file uh, folder. So we have it loading each image, each file, and then performing denoising on the images uh, in, these, uh, in this file. So we have this running in Python and we have it running, running away, and you can see each time it produces an image, it actually will replace uh, in this version the image uh, that was original. So you can see here uh, DGI um, uh, DGI zero one one six uh, was once infrared, an infrared image. Now it's become grayscaled and denoised, and the same thing will happen here to DGI. 0117, you'll see it being replaced uh, now. Uh, this code can take a bit of time because these images are actually quite large. They're uh, typically seven uh, megabytes, some of them. So there we go, yeah. So it's replaced it. So let's have a look at the images and see how they turned out. Now these images we can use uh, in our mapping project. We can actually, such as what I showcased on this channel before, we can use these images to create three-dimensional maps using a uh, structure from motion, uh, CMVS and, and so forth, or PIX4D, uh, whichever you like. So you can see here, uh, this actually region is water, 
Uh, so water has absorbance in the uh, infrared, so it appears blue. Uh, and these regions are highly reflective in the infrared, near infrared, so they are com coming up as orange, and that's an indication that the vegetation here is healthy. Uh, this is obviously a healthy region of vegetation, and you can see different section being mapped. Uh, the same story, we have water here. Uh, this is some object that's absorbing infrared, and uh, near infrared, this is also absorbing it, so it's probably water as well. And you can see also here tr uh, healthy vegetation in the form of trees, and uh, and so forth so this is a obviously a very useful technique for remote sensing and for land use management uh, and in platforms such as qgis just briefly uh, we can of course do ndvi as well uh, using these uh, images and the um, images that are produced by qgis could also be potentially denoised uh, in this platform but there's other things that can be denoised as well uh, without going into much detail. Uh, another aspect of research I'm interested in in the drones is using uh, the drone not only for near infrared imaging but for near ultraviolet imaging. And near ultraviolet imaging is interesting because it allows one to uh, do remote sensing of flowering plants, not just of the greenery, uh, the vegetation of the plants, but actually the flowers of plants as well to see how reflective they are in the infrared and Obviously, this is an index which may uh, have some applications in the future for um, perhaps uh, monitoring areas for um, uh, insect populations, pollination, uh, indexing, and so forth. Uh, again, this is experimental. Uh, near ultraviolet imaging uh, with drones uh, is actually something that's still in the uh, infancy. Uh, near uh, ultraviolet imaging has really only been explored uh, for use in applications such as um, power line monitoring uh, for uh, uh, monitoring of coronal discharge and so forth uh, from power lines uh, for safety. But I've been trying to develop my own uh, novel uh, ultraviolet uh, reflectance indices uh, for uh, plant uh, flower uh, um, essentially evaluation and identification and remote sensing and a way to catalog plants. So you can see here the green channel uh, is uh, an indication of high infrared, or sorry, high ultraviolet uh, reflectance. Uh, the purple uh, kind of blue channel uh, indicates that we have simply uh, absorbance of ultraviolet, uh, whereas um, black, of course, then being, being absorbance of ultraviolet as well, whereas green would indicate high ultraviolet reflectance. And we can use this to generate, uh, for example, ultraviolet reflectance indexes. For example, this flower as well has a fluorescence, essentially, uh, indication by this uh, reflectance being very high. So the higher the reflective index in the ultraviolet, it indicates the um, more fluorescent the plant material is, the flowers in this case. So you can see here already uh, we have a problem. Uh, so even at close range, we have a lot of noise in these images. So we can use ROF uh, to denoise uh, the images, and indeed, we can do this here. Now, with the ultraviolet imaging, so this, we can separate the different channels. So we actually don't have to, uh, in the case of the ROF, uh, we don't, in ultraviolet and also infrared, we don't have to denoise all of the channels. We can just denoise the channels we're interested in. This saves on computing time and computing power. So all we have to do in the case of near infrared is focus on our red channel. That's the channel we want to denoise and that's the channel we want because it has the near infrared information. And in the case of our ultraviolet index, we want to denoise the green channel. Uh, the green channel being the channel that has the reflectance information uh, with regards to identification of uh, flowering uh, plants and uh, the thing with uh, sensor um, picks uh, the sensors the green channel uh, due to the sensor information there's usually two uh, green pixels for every one red or one blue pixel so actually the denoising is actually much more visibly uh, um, apparent on for our ultraviolet indexing so that's actually to our advantage because it turns out that the optics uh, used for ultraviolet uh, photography are themselves quite noisy. Uh, they eliminate a lot of noise and also because the um, 
presence of ultraviolet light, ambient ultraviolet light, uh, is actually quite low. I believe only really 10% of the, uh, or less, of uh, the UV from the sun actually reaches the surface of the earth and is available for reflectance photography in the first place. So denoising is definitely very useful for this. And you can see here, we have uh, our ultraviolet uh, reflectance index uh, giving us apparent information. So in black, it's obviously absorbing. Uh, blue, it's again absorbing uh, or uh, reflecting very weakly. Then when we get into green and yellow, uh, we see the reflectance becoming apparent. So we see the reflectance index here becoming apparent. This can be, of course, useful for uh, uh, plant, uh, for object classification uh, by remote sensing using uh, drones. So all we have to do is focus on the green channel, the objects that are green, and have some type of selection uh, procedure, uh, essentially filtering out the, uh, the background and only focusing in on the flowers, essentially nearly giving us a kind of a, bee, a bee's eye view of the world, again, with other flowers as well that are highly reflective in the ultraviolet. So these indexes are experimental. Um, again, we have another one here that's kind of coming up quite uh, blue. Uh, again, these are experimental ways to use uh, denoising on different uh, applications. So, uh, yes, yeah, that's one that's very nice because it actually shows the uh, certain even regions of the flower actually itself are actually reflecting more than others, which is quite interesting. Um, uh, so we can also use this technology uh, in other ways as well. And another way in which I've been exploring um, de uh, not only uh, photography, but also denoising techniques in photography has been in the use of um, at drone use for astrophotography. So in a previous video and in future videos, I'm going to be focusing on drones for use in astrophotography, but more importantly, an extra feature has been uh, um, the denoising of images taken using the drone, the high exposure images. And the reason for this is uh, obvious. Uh, the more photons absorbed by the camera, uh, the greater the chances are that those um, photons will actually be, uh, will create noise. Uh, in, in effect, the higher the exposure, the, more, the greater the probability that the camera is going to be um, subject to noise and uh, the signal to noise ratio is something that's going to be balanced um, with the number of images taken uh, versus the exposure. Ideally, um, a way to combat this in practical terms is uh, essentially to take um, many more images at a lower exposure and uh, essentially do um, exposure stacking rather than taking just a few images uh, under long exposure. Uh, but some in some cases um it's useful to take uh, lots of images at a high exposure at the highest exposure and in that case uh, denoising is essential now just as in the ndvi case um the denoising works on grayscale on the image gradient across the image domain so this means that we have to uh, have a grayscale image as our output so you can see this was the original image, and this was the denoised uh, grayscale image. So the image has been minimized a bit here, but some of the features are definitely more visible. And so you can see here, yeah, Cassiopeia. And if you remember, there was the Andromeda galaxy down here, kind of hidden behind the tree, as indicated in a previous video. Uh, you can see then per per Perseus, the constellation Perseus, uh, Andromeda, and Cassiopeia. So uh, these are all taken in the near infrared uh, with my multi-spectral camera mostly near infrared that's the dominant wavelength uh, recorded here as you can see quite plainly from the trees this was taken during the summertime so actually the trees were fully green here but it was taken at night and the dominant wavelength being reflected from the vegetation was uh, near infrared as is typical when we are uh, looking for a uh, healthy vegetation but what we want to do is denoise the image so that we can see more clearly the stars uh, versus the noise uh, in the image. And of course, stacking them all together will result in uh, our image then forming the stacked image. So 
I had done that previously and denoised as many photos as possible to get a clear uh, image of with the minimum amount of noise in the in the photograph so yeah and the idea is, is to do as many of these as possible and to stack them together so this is a work in progress i'm still working on the technique of how to denoise astrophotography images and to stack them together uh, in python uh, i was using a, a software called sequator to do this but my end goal is to be able to do this in python uh, as a standalone uh, code though sequator is very useful for uh, the, the um, for image stacking and also it has its own denoising uh, algorithms as well uh, which are based on the same technology gradient descent so in a way uh, this project uh, and video has been a showcase of basically looking under the hood of how a lot of these denoising uh, programs work uh, in um, um, application software such as Sequator and so forth and uh, Photoshop and so on so they use a lot of this technique of uh, total variance reduction or minimization or regularization uh, which use a number of different algorithms uh, one of which is the ROF algorithm uh, which uh, under a certain procedure again uses uh, gradient descent to as we talked about to do this technique of uh, TV regularization by taking by representing the uh, the um, total variance as some function uh, and energy um, ne nearest neighbor energy uh, function for example in the case of the um, Chambol uh, um, 2005 paper uh, and taking the derivative taking the basically the a partial differential equation on this function to uh, represent it as an energy surface as a gradient in this energy surface of of the matrix the energy values being the different uh, grayscale values and finding the minima the lo a good local minima in order to minimize the total variance which in turn minimizes the noise uh, throughout the image domain and an interesting uh, sub note uh, of this uh, sort of mathematically mathematical interest uh, has is at least from my point of view is is that if you I'll just extend that a little bit uh, if you um and in, in any of these procedures the image domain uh, was originally um a, a rectangular domain but the transformation, if we have the transformation in this direction as being, uh, let's say, from um, a, a from a a to b, so that was the first translation. So translating the image domain into a um, a function. And then doing a transformation of the function into a derivative, that's another transformation. So the image domain actually, oops, actually goes from being, so from B then to, let's say, C, it actually transfers the image from being a rectangular domain into a cylindrical domain. So it actually transfers it from being rectangular to cylindrical. And that's interesting because um, the, uh, the topology of the domain has uh, changed, of course, but it nevertheless uh, keeps the same values as the uh, pixel, uh, the data uh, in the, in the images are the same are the same in terms of their uh, content but the topology has changed so changing the topology of the the uh, the image if I just rub this out here so again this is just a bit of bit of uh, crude uh, artwork uh, to illustrate what I'm talking about so the image domain if I just type in uh, image image domain here, 
the image domain has changed from being a uh, being in a rectangular space image domain space to being in a cylindrical image domain uh, space but the pixel values are the same the only difference is, is that they're now in a, a different topology and this has been uh, this also is the function of the role function that we discussed when we talked about it in the context of our uh, github program it's it, uh, effectively roles uh, the role function is what causes is responsible for the correlations or the neighbor differences uh, so computing the neighbor differences uh, in this case was derivatives it is to measures the difference between the two arrays so that's an interesting side note that in fact we can change the topology of an image domain so i'll just type that uh, in there just for again uh, further context because it's an interesting fact so the image uh, domain uh, changes from a, a rectangular uh, topology to a, a torus uh, basically so it changes actually from a uh, so the transformation from a to b brings it to a cylinder so this is a to b and then our second transformation makes it into and i don't know if i can even draw a torus on this i don't think you can draw three-dimensional objects in paint but you see the uh, get the idea it makes it into a torus or a or a ring sort of like this yeah uh, something like that anyway but the idea is is that yeah it makes it into a kind of a, a torus or or a ring yeah, something something like that. So from A to B, it rolls up again, rolls the uh, the shape of the image domain into a cylinder, and then from B to C, it kind of takes the cylinder and, uh, if you like, squeezes it together into a torus. And we have no basically uh, no with with no no uh, uh, no uh, destruction of. Uh, the uh, pixel data and the reason why is because if you know from topology uh, you can basically take a rectangle make it into a cylinder take the cylinder make it into a torus without causing any tears or rips so essentially this transformation doesn't destroy any of the image data and we can uh, effectively say that we are um, able to transform the image data from this denoise, this is our, our denoised image, and we could then use a uh, project it onto our original image. So this is our uh, denoised uh, image uh, domain. So our denoised image domain is actually a torus, whereas our original, this was our original, uh, let's say, uh, noisy uh, image domain. OK, so that's an interesting side note. I th uh, think it's very interesting as well and kind of um, makes sense that some of these techniques like simulated annealing um, gradient descent and so on, uh, they are all dealing with energy surfaces and the energy surfaces are uh, invariant of the topology uh, of one versus. Um, uh, let me just I won't save that at the moment. The one versus the other. So uh, I'll share this image on my on my blog, uh, just as a summary. It's just. Uh, but the core thing to understand is is that we went here over this, the theory of the code, the ROF algorithm, and used it in these applications. And more and more on this GitHub repository, I'm going to include. The ROF algorithm on particularly denoising of ultraviolet photography, uh, NDVI imaging, again, both using drones and the drone based astrophotography. So, hopefully, in the next few weeks, uh, maybe even a month or two, 
I am hoping to do astrophotography again with the drone uh, for the winter night sky to be able to take images, long exposure images of uh, the Orion uh, molecular cloud comp complex uh, in the near infrared, which should be very interesting. And using the denoising techniques we've talked about here, we'll be able to uh, create um, some very interesting high resolution uh, images. So thank you for listening. This has been a tutorial just going over the topics of denoising using the OROF algorithm. Uh, there's actually Fatimi, is, uh, Fatimi, I misspelled that, but I'll correct it. Um, so we went over the image domain, what uh, the total variance is with respect to the image gradient across the image. It's the integral of or sum of the total uh, gradient across the image. Uh, the uh, total variance is represented by a function in the algorithms used uh, for minimizing the total variance, which is, in effect, minimizing the noise in an image and how this is done with respect to the um, uh, different uh, techniques uh, with reference to the literature that's been developed uh, using this technique over the years. And there's always new developments all the time in, in, uh, in this technology. So it's a very interesting um, uh, area of image processing and something I think when combined with drones uh, makes it for a very powerful uh, tool for cleaning up images, especially images where detail is very important. So thanks for listening, and I hope to give an update on this project again soon. Thank you.